we're going to be looking at canonical penalties. Those are known as sanctions for sins against the church. So a little bit about canonical penalties. All sin incurs some type of punishment, eternal or temporal, and requires penance to make up for the injustice. Now, some of these sins are offenses against the church specifically. As such, the church has the right to impose certain punishments and penances for these sins. So who can be sanctioned then by the church? Well, only Catholics, members of the church. In addition to that, the Catholic who is sanctioned must be 16 years old. No, not only that they are sinning, but that they are violating a law that has a penalty attached to it. They also cannot be forced or coerced. They cannot be acting in self-defense. A couple of the laws deal with attacking a bishop or a pope. And they also must have full use of their reason. Now, the sanctions come in two types. First, expiatory and then censures. So expiatory sanctions are much like uh, a prison sentence in criminal law here in the U.S. It really makes up for the wrong that has been done. It's a way to kind of carry out justice uh, to make up for the injustice that has been done. And you might see this in priests that are accused of sexual abuse and are then, you know, justly convicted. Um, the church might say that they need to retire from public life or they need to live a life of prayer and penance for what they've done. It's just making up for the wrong they've done. Another type of sanction, which really does not have um, uh, a comparison in our legal system, are what are known as censures. Censures are considered medicinal sanctions, like a medicine. A medicine is there to heal a wound or an illness. These censures, these sanctions, these um, penalties that are imposed are there to correct a fault that is occurring, and they come in two types. So you have the ferende sententiae which is anytime a law is written and says that it carries a just penalty without indicating what the penalty is, it's a ferende sententiae, which means an investigation must take place. So first of all, the fault must be found out, an investigation must take place, and then a competent authority, usually a bishop, must then assign the penalty. That's different from what's called a latte sententiae. Uh, latte sententia doesn't have an easy English translation, but it basically means that the penalty is automatically incurred simply by violating the law, meaning no one has to find out about it. No one ever has to hear about it. No investigation ever has to take place. No authority ever have to, has to impose it. The penalty simply occurs. So let's take the example of breaking the seal of confession. If a priest ever breaks the seal of confession, it incurs an automatic, that's latte sententiae, excommunication. The priest is excommunicated from the moment he breaks the seal of confession. Whereas if a non-confessor like myself, who overhears a confession, decides to reveal the confession or the identity of the person to someone in conversation, I incur a just penalty, which means I, I must be found out, it must be investigated, and uh, the bishop must impose a penalty upon me. Now, there are three types of penalties that fall under censures. First of all, excommunication. Excommunication can be applied to any Catholic, and it usually pertains to the celebration and the reception of sacraments and any kind of governance role that you have within the church, meaning you can't perform those things. An interdict is a little bit less serious. It can be applied to any Catholic and usually just pertains to not being able to celebrate or receive the sacraments. However, if you hold a governance position, you could still govern. And then finally, suspension. Suspension is a special type of censure that only applies to clergy, and it usually uh, means it forbids them to uh, celebrate the sacraments. And finally, what do you need to do to lift the sanction? First of all, you need to go to confession. However, before you can receive absolution, sometimes the canonical penalty must be lifted by the Pope. Other times it can be lifted by the bishop. And in a few instances, the canonical pen penalty can actually be lifted by the priest who is hearing the confession. It really just depends. And that's why you should go to confession to figure out exactly what must take place after that.